Let's ramp up the positivity and the energy levels in WST and welcome in Blue Bomber quarterback Chris Streveler to the show. It certainly seems like the energy here on Bomber Nation's cranked up a few notches since we got the word that uh, you are back in blue and gold this season. Uh, what about for yourself since the announcement was made recently? It's been crazy, man. It's been such a whirlwind. And like the social media stuff, first of all, I got to give my hats off to the Winnipeg social media team. The little fur coat thing with the closet, with the coming soon. I mean, that was amazing. And I had so many of my buddies from the NFL and from the States that were like, dude, they're killing the social media game. So that got the people going and just seeing all the love and support from the fans and, you know, uh, my teammates and stuff like that. It's just been super exciting. But to finally get up here today and be around the people and see fans and see my teammates and um, man, it, it feels real. It feels like home and I couldn't be more excited to get this thing rolling. Chris, if you could take us back through last season, um, you know, you were off, obviously you came back and maybe you can touch on the welcome that you received when you came out mid season to a take in a game and just reconnect with fans. Um, but you know, your thought process as to how realistic it was, or was it a plan of yours at some point to come back to the bombers and how it all came together this off season? Yeah, it was last season was hard for me. I'm not going to lie. It was a hard season, you know, I mean, going into camp and, really knowing what you're going to do in the preseason and feeling extremely confident about the opportunity you're going to get and what you're going to put on tape and then getting injured right away is really hard. And it took me some time to mentally kind of wrap my mind around that. Um, so, you know, that's why it was so great to be able to get in, get up here to Winnipeg during the Banjo Bowl, just to see some fans, feel some support, see my former teammates and like just support those guys. It was extremely exciting. But at the time, it was not a thought in my head that I was going to be coming back here. I thought there was going to be an NFL opportunity coming. And I had a couple of workouts after that, that, um, you know, didn't really end up amounting to anything. They weren't necessarily real opportunities. So, you know, as things kind of moved along and, um, you know, I had a workout with Chicago that was specifically disappointing and from an opportunity standpoint, and that's what really sparked it. And that was really, really late in the NFL season. It was like the last week. And I was like, you know what, man, unless something real comes down the pipeline in the next week or two, I'm going to really start pursuing the CFL because I know what I can bring to a team. I know the energy that I can bring to a team and the leadership. And that's what I want to do. And I don't want to just sit here and have that be wasted and think, well, I should have went and played more. I had passion for the game. I had energy and I just didn't play. I want to pursue that. And so that's when everything kind of got turning and um, you know, but it was great to get up during the banjo bowl and just see everyone and, um, you know, get around the fans and my teammates and just, you know, reconnect with those guys. And I'm so glad I did now because, you know, here I am again. And I saw those guys not that long ago. You know, it's funny hearing you say that because obviously on this program and with amongst Bomber fans, everyone's been following what you've been doing in the National Football League. And I mean, you had that incredible preseason with the Jets and people were, you know, I mean, listen, you made a very good case to get in and play a little bit more. But as it happens at the highest level, sometimes those opportunities are, aren't always there. And I mean, I remember a number of conversations on this program and maybe it was somewhat wishful thinking, but Chris Strebler will hopefully at some point be back here because he loves to play. And for you, I imagine getting on the field and being a significant part of an offense again, um, never mind in a place that you love with people that you love, uh, I'm sure was right at the top of the list while you ended up coming to this decision. Well, I just love that, like, that's my brand and that's what people think about me is, th is that I love to play the game and I play it with energy and excitement because that's what I am. And so I love that people can see that and feel that when I play the game because that's what I try to bring to a team. And you know, I am excited to play. I'm excited to get on the field, but I'm excited to just win games, man. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to help this team do. And that's what's the biggest priority to me. You know, so many people are trying to ask me about what's your role going to be? What's this? What's that? I don't really care. I'm just excited to be on a team that appreciates me, is excited to have me, and that I can help win games, whatever that looks like. So that's what I'm excited about, man. And um, yeah, it's 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 very exciting. You know, just speaking of roles and whatnot, I mean, obviously Zach Caleros is here. We all know about Zach. Maybe if you can't touch on your relationship with Zach for a moment and, um, you know, as well as your conversations with Buck Pierce, because it is a little different right now. There's a few more things uh, open to offensive coordinators when it comes to quarterback personnel on the field going into this season. Yeah. I mean, obviously I know Zach. We played together, had that run in 2019. And 
I mean, he's done such a tremendous job since then. I saw him when I came up here for Banjo Bowl, shot him a message, uh, you know, when I signed here. And so we've, we've been in contact for sure. And I'm, and I'm excited to, you know, see him even more once camp gets rolling and really reconnect with him. Sent a message to Buck this morning, like, hey, man, I'm in the facility. I'd love to pop by. So I think once we wrap up everything with the media here and I get my workout in, I'm going to pop into his office and um, chop it up with him a little bit. But, yeah, I mean, we got a lot of weapons on this team. Um, you know, like, I mean, I could go down the list of guys that we need to get the ball to. And so um, it's exciting. It's a great problem to have is, you know, how am I going to get the ball to all these great players that, um, you know, keep coming back to this team. And so it, it's exciting. It's a great problem to have. And I'm excited to see how this offense unfolds throughout camp because so many people are trying to speculate, oh, what does it look like? Well, you don't really know until you get on the field in camp and start running plays and figure out what you guys are good at and what looks good. It changes on a year to year basis. And um, you know, that's what they've done such a good job of is tailoring this offense to the guys that are in the building and what they do well. And I know that we're going to continue to do that this year. Chris Trevler's with us on Winnipeg Sports Talk, back in blue and gold. I, I want to quickly ask you, though, about the time in the National Football League. I mean, uh, you know, get him into a playoff game with the Cardinals. And I mean, I, speak to, if you could, that preseason you had with the Jets, because I mean, at week after week after week, you were going in there late. You were winning a football game. And I mean, just the scenes be preseason scenes inside that locker room. It seemed like, uh, frankly, it reminded me of how much you were loved in the Winnipeg Blue Bomber locker room in that jet locker room before the season even got going. I think it was it was a crazy preseason, man, because I got there and, um, you know, I didn't get any reps the first two and a half, three weeks of camp. I had not taken a rep. And so when I went into the first game, I swear half the team was like, what's this dude's name? I'd never even seen this guy play. And then one thing leads to another, end up throwing a game-winning touchdown, and we win, and then we get in the locker room, and Sal is, like, going through his speech. He's like, how about Strebler? And I feel like half the team was like, yeah, how about this guy? We don't even know what this dude's about. Like, he, he just did that. And so it kind of just became this thing throughout the preseason where the next week, you know, fourth quarter comeback, we end up winning that game. And then, you know, same thing. And then the next week, it, like, almost became a joke. Like, I'm going on the field with a minute 30 left, and the OC in my ear is like, all right, buddy, let's just go do it again. And then we did it again. And then the same thing in the locker room, like, ah, Straveler, you know. And, you know, to be embraced by a team like that who you come in as a guy that dudes don't even know your name in the first preseason. And then they watch you play the game and watch the way you carry yourself on a day-to-day -day basis, even though you're not getting reps, even though it's frustrating. They, they, to see a team like that, like, just get behind me and what I'm about and the way that I carry myself and play the game, it was like, very validating of the way that, you know, just keep working hard and just stay consistent and those opportunities will come and you'll be ready. And, you know, I ended up getting cut after that preseason. Like people forget that. Like I, you know, Sal is talking about, Oh, one of the best preseasons you've ever seen. I got the call 23 hours later. Yeah. Yo, bring your iPad in and your stuff's in a garbage bag waiting for you, you know? So that, you know, and I ended up getting back on the preseason on the, on the uh, practice squad after that. But like people forget that, that was just another adversity that I had to go through of, man, I did everything I could and it still didn't happen. And that's why I'm here today with the mindset that I have because of all of those things I've been through, being cut five times, you know, having a great preseason, still getting cut. All of these things that I've been through, it's created a, a very strong mindset. And again, just a passion for this game that is hard to put into words. Well, I mean, listen, we remember it well because we were following it. I mean, everyone was here pulling for you. I mean, if you weren't going to be a bomber, I mean, let's see the guy go out and uh, make it happen and earn a spot in the National Football League. And to be honest, I mean, it was depressing from a fan standpoint. You could maybe speak to it as well. I mean, what more could you have done in your opportunity to get a spot on that roster? I don't think anything. And yet sometimes it's just not in the cards. But you know what? That's what gives me peace. That's what gives me peace. I prepared as hard as I could every day. I did the most I could with that opportunity at the time. I can hang my head. I can hold my head high. There's no reason to hang my head after that. So I knew I did everything I could and I can sleep at night knowing that I worked as hard as I could. And, you know, the other thing you touched on is, you know, the people in Winnipeg and I just have to give a shout out to those people and people like yourself and the fans of like, I have felt that support from from you guys through these past five years and that's a big reason why when people ask me you know what's winnipeg like like what that place is about i'm like it's the best people you're going to meet these people will ride with you and they want to see people that have ties to winnipeg or are from winnipeg go and do big things and they will ride with you and support you through all of that and so that's the love that i felt from these people that's part of the reason why i wanted to come back in bangible 
as I hadn't been back since the Great Cup Parade, and I wanted to show those people some appreciation and love. And it just so happened that now I'm back here for a full season, and uh, we get to be on this journey together again. What was that Banjo Bowl weekend like? Because, I mean, honestly, it was like returning son of the city. I mean, hero. It seemed like you were pretty busy for a few days, but uh, you mentioned feeling the love. I don't think there could have been po a possible way to express more to you when you came back. Yeah. I wanted to be busy. Like, I told I told everyone when I'm coming back, like, yo, get me events. Get me around the fans as much as I can. Like, obviously, I'm coming to support my teammates and see those guys, and but they're preparing. Like, during, you know, Friday – Leading up, like they're preparing for the game, so I'm not going to bother them. I'll see them after the game once they handle business. But while I'm here, like they're preparing, like, let me go get around the fans and show them love and thank them for their support um, because it does not go unnoticed. And it's something that um, has been extremely important to me uh, on this journey. Chris, there's been a lot of continuity on the uh, on this roster, um, you know, since you uh, left after the, the Great Cup championship and now back uh, when you signed the deal. Um, did the phone blow up with some familiar faces from that bomber locker room? What was it like amongst your teammates and former teammates knowing that you were coming back to the peg? Yeah, it was really exciting. And like, even just now I walk in the weight room and there goes Dembski, uh, uh, uh Kenny and, uh, and Willie, right. It's like three guys that I love and, and that we know. And so like the amount of dudes that are still here and, um, you know, we might, we might, you know, hairline might be going back a little bit. We might have a little touch of gray in the beard, but we're still the same guys, man. We still got love for each other and we still want to win football games and know how to win football games. And so it's exciting. And that's a big reason why I'm here. Like I know what this culture is about. I know the culture that, um, the coaching staff has built in the front office and all those guys. And I know what these, these guys in the locker room are about. Most importantly, I know what they stand for. I know what the leadership looks like and I know how I can fit in with that. And so that is so important to me and i believe that you know the culture and the people that you have in a building is just as important as as the players um in terms of how do you win championships the way that people carry themselves on a day-to-day -day basis players personnel staff coaches i think that's just as important and i know what the people in this building are about speaking of that culture i mean it is a championship culture that has been kind of developed since uh, you were here i have to ask you about mike o'shea and you know the type of coach he is and, and as a player your level of excitement to come back and uh, go to battle for Coach O'Shea and his staff? Yeah, I don't think I could have a higher level of respect for a head coach. Um, a man that's played this game at the highest level, man, played in the CFL for 20 years, man. So he knows what it takes. He's won championships as a player and a coach. And, you know, the FIFO mentality, that culture that he's built, like that's something I brought down to the NFL. And I tell people about that. I, and, and when I tell people about that, they're like, that makes a lot of sense about you. And like, it was very easy for me to buy into this culture from day one and what that whole thing's about. And, um, you know, I, I can't say enough about, um, you know, the person that he is, the way he runs this organization and the culture that he instills, because it's about the team. It's about honoring your teammates and that's what I'm about, man. I play the game for my teammates. I play the game hard because I want to win games and I want to honor the person next to me. It has nothing to do with myself and any personal accolades or anything like that. It has everything to do with trying to win championships and honoring my brother who's putting his body on the line for me. And that's why I play the, play the game the way that I do. That's why I play as hard as I do because if I see somebody next to me putting their body on the line, I got to do the same thing. And so um, I know he understands that about me and he respects that. And um, – I couldn't be more excited to be playing for a guy like that. Chris, um, you know, as far as this offseason went, um, we knew that it was going to be tough for Kyle Walters. I mean, when you when you win as consistently as the Winnipeg Blue Bombers have, there's a lot of guys who are having short careers that deserve raises. Um, and there were some tough decisions to be made for yourself coming back. Was it Winnipeg or nothing? Um, was it easy to come back to Winnipeg? Did you consider other spots in the league? Fill us in on, on that, or were you always focused on coming back and being a Blue Bomber again? I mean, I think it's well documented that I definitely did talk to other teams and I kicked the tires on that. But I think all those teams will probably tell you the same thing, that they know that Winnipeg has a special place in my heart. Um, and so, you know, I definitely did my due diligence to see what opportunities were out there because when you're acting as your own agent and you're doing that yourself, you would be negligent if you didn't do that. Um, but thankfully, you know, I have a lot of good relationships um, with people in this building, um, you know, Darren Cameron being one of them, someone that I'm good friends with and, and that we've kept a good relationship through the years. So it was really easy to get back in touch with him and just say like, Hey man, um, 
I'm thinking about doing this. Like, let's start talking. And so we text and, and talk on the phone regularly regardless. So when it kind of became business time, we're like, all right, let's flip the switch a little bit and get into business mode and start talking about what this looks like and kind of put that friendship to the side for the minute while we get through this deal. Um, and then once, you know, we were able to kind of get on the same page and figure out that it was going to be possible. It, it really was Winnipeg and um, just figuring out, okay, let's, let's figure something out that makes sense for both of us. Um, and we ended up doing that. And I think both sides came away really excited and happy. Chris, the, uh, we can feel the energy. Uh, the fans can feel the energy. You cannot wait to get back out to the newly named Princess Auto Stadium and see you and the fellas get it done. But you bring the energy every single day. I was talking to DC. We were hoping to get you on. Oh, he's in Australia. He's here, there. <laughs> Fill us in on just how, like, your off season right now and what's to come because it seems like you don't have a lot of downtime and a lot of down days before uh, you're back here in Winnipeg. No, I don't. I'm a, I'm a busy man, but that's good. Like, I want to be busy. And so, um, you know, this past month has been a lot of traveling and taking a little bit of a mental break and physical break just to get my body back under me. I've been training so hard since August, waiting for an opportunity. And so, um, you know, when – uh, Drew Waltarski Wally was having his wedding in Australia. I'm like, man, I got enough credit card points to pay for the flight for me and my girl. Let's go out there and, and see you. So we did that. Uh, came back for a little bit. Then I went down to this business conference through this um, organization called PAC, Pro Athlete Community. And it's all about networking and building connections in the business world to kind of set some foundation for life after football. So I was able to go do that in Miami for a couple of days. Then I came back and immediately uh, went down to Tulum with uh, some of my good buddies down there as well. So I've been all over the place. People are calling me uh, Mr. Worldwide. I think I'm the new pit bull. So, um, <laughs> so it's, it's, it's been you can pull it off. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe just shave the head a little bit, but um, <laughs> you know, it's been good, but you know, other than that, man, it's been super busy. Um, I started I'm the co-founder of a quarterback training company out in Arizona. We've been training quarterbacks both in person and virtually. Um, actually just locked in my first out-of-state camp in South Dakota, so I'll be hitting that right before I come up for camp here. Um, I got my first investment property in real estate. Um, I've been doing some public speaking gigs, did a little broadcasting work for uh, my alma mater, University of South Dakota. So I got my hands in a lot of pots, and I'm just trying to continue to plant seeds and keep the ball rolling both in football and outside of football. Um, but with that being said, we're – couple months out now so it's time to kind of put all that stuff away and start to really narrow my focus into okay let's keep let's get back to the main thing of coming to winnipeg and trying to win a championship and so that's where my that's where my focus is at now and that's where it's going to continue to be as i lead into camp here this is uh, this has just been awesome chris well i guess on the way out um a perfect opportunity to just uh, ask you about your level of excitement to put that blue and gold back on and get in front of those fans at Princess Auto Stadium and maybe a message to Bomber fans about what you're bringing back to the table in your return. Well, I think someone needs to go back and listen to this interview and count the amount of times I've said excited. Uh, I'm excited, man. And 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 we're going to be doing a little, I think, like the little green screen photo shoot stuff tomorrow. I'll get to put the uniform on, man. And I couldn't be more excited to, to feel that energy. And, you know, to the fans and to anybody, my teammates, um, what I'm bringing is energy and excitement and passion for the game. And I'm going to be the best version of myself every single day when I step on that field and step in this locker room. And my number one goal is help this team win games. I don't care what I have to do because that's why I'm here. I'm here to win football games. And um, they know they're going to get someone that's going to play the game 110% every single snap. I'll put my body on the line and I will dedicate my life to trying to win football games. And that's what I'm about. And so any fan or any teammate or anybody listening to this, that's the type of player or person you're going to get on a daily basis. Someone that gives 110% and does everything they can for the teammates. Chris, June cannot come soon enough. It's so great to have you back in the peg. Uh, have a great rest of the off season. Good luck with everything else outside of football. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing you back at that Princess Auto Stadium in front of Bomber fans coming up very soon. Oh, yeah, man. Thank you. I can't wait. Let's go.